Get ready, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for kickoffs and kick ons. <laughs> Yes, hello once again and welcome to episode two. Yeah, sorry, Drew, you, do you want me to start again? Or yes, I, was just, trying to, I was trying to hold it off, but I couldn't. <laughs> was it a sneeze or? I'm good, you, after, after you. Okay. Yes, hello, welcome once again to episode two of Kickoffs and Kick-Ons. That's right, it is the Coco Show. It is the Rugby Pod Revolution and you are now a part of it. Um, hey. Lots to chat about in the world of rugby, and you've come to the right joint for it this week. We're going to be talking Australian rugby. We're going to be talking world rugby. We're going to be talking Six Nations for all you Northern Hemisphere legends. We're going to be talking, uh, well, hey, we've got a massive guest. Mac Hansen is coming Mac on. Mac Daddy. Mac Daddy O, that's right. Uh, and of course, the quiz, my favourite part. So stick around for that. Now, as always, the great man, Tom Erskine, he's written intros. Is everybody ready? Is he going again? He's gone again. Wow. Listen to this one, boys. Gits, I hope you're ready for this one. Uh, the Coco Show ready. wouldn't be the Coco Show without our three resident golden oldies. Three gentlemen that have done the green and gold, that have done their country proud on the field while disgracing their families off it. As you can see from our set, this show is a sinking ship and we have only one life raft for all of our highly decorated first mates. So, the first man off SSS. Let me start it again. So the first man off SS Eddie and onto HMAS Schmitty is a gentleman that might be compressed in stature, but makes up for it in his bank balance. He lives part-time in the nation's capital and the other half of the year in the city of San Diego, which is, of course, German for a whale's vagina. Please put your piggy banks up and pick up your Mai Tais and give the man a, a, a legion, give this man a legion of SoCal lovin'. Please welcome our little anchor man, Matt Goitan Gitto. Gits, are you wow. there? I'm there. Gee, you stumbled through that. <laughs> That's all marbles today. Gitsy, oh. we're shopping for a set and a new house. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Um, you're using big words here, Tommy. Vagina. Small font. I haven't heard vagina before. That's a big one. Okay. <laughs> Second man onto this landbound vessel of love is a bloke that always paints them like one of his French girls. He is our resident heartthrob that puts the Titanic in our Titanic failure of a podcast. <laughs> Please welcome a man that looks fabulous in nothing but his life vest using both the light and whistle for attracting attention, the one, the only, and the always inflated, Mr. Drew Biv Mitchell. <laughs> hey, thanks. Thanks, Tommy. Nice to know you got a bit of a crush on me. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Last, this is my favourite, by the way. Oh, he, he's go. always good with you, sweet. Last, but definitely not the least, is a man that doesn't say a whole heap. But when he does say something, people normally fast forward. <laughs> <laughs> On the service, he appears to be the clean-cut captain type. However, his alter ego holiday swoop is the naughtiest of the nautical salty sea dogs. <laughs> so throw off your bowliness and get your port and starboard sorted out as this man circumvents all of your dirtiest thoughts. Please lick my neck, my back, my defence and my attack. <laughs> of course, it's the famous swoop D-O-double-G. Tommy. What an wow. intro. Hold on, Tommy. Well, boys, I'm trying wow. to get Tommy to come in and read them. Tommy, can you yeah. just come in and give a wave? I know if you're listening, my you can't neck, see him. My back. <laughs> my defence and, and my, my crack. This is and my Tommy. Attack. What do you reckon? Gits next week, we get Tommy in to read them? Um... Well, you couldn't do any worse. Than I knew you were going to say that, mate. <laughs> I tossed that up for you. Um, all right, so uh, let's get onto the set real quick for those of you uh, that tuned in last week. Um, you realise that the set's not the same as it was. We had a palm tree. Um, we sorry, yeah, little palm tree. We've got a second tree on the end there, guys. Um, it's fake though, <laughs> mate. <laughs> That's fake. Oh, magic of television it looks real. Where'd um, you pick that up from? That one, um, that was curbside pickup. <laughs> it was council clean up. <laughs> My neighbour was throwing it out. It's very good though. I gave it a clean, um, and now it's into the set. Um, obviously, the chairs very uncomfortable. And oh. we did we did a throw out. We had a call out last week. Please, if you have any set pieces that you can send, we had a whole bunch of people that wrote in and said, "Yeah, we've got stuff." Gentleman in America was uh, going to send it across. I don't know how long that takes by boat. I don't think we'll still be here then. <laughs> um, then there was the village inn in Paddington. They've all put up a seat. Uh, their rooting seat, I think it is. Oh, it's, wow, yeah, wow. where most of the rooting takes place. Um, and the good news is, though, uh, a young, well, not a young, a gentleman from the Scalabrini Village retirement home has Scalab sent in some cushions. Now, they're a particular type of cushion. <laughs> these are 
Just if you look there, they, these are hemorrhoid cushions and yeah. <laughs> he had them in abundance. So if we sit on these, how's that feel under your butt? Oh, really good. I might actually take this to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's not bad, actually. That's yeah, not bad. Why have I been sitting in on yeah. cushions with, like, without holes in the middle of them? That's great. Uh, anyway, that's the set. If you do have a set and you want to send it in, we have a, had a little nibble from a company. Um, mm-hmm. who have said they've got a set for us. Uh, it hasn't arrived in time, right. but we're hoping next week that they might be our saviour. I'll tell you what else. Yeah. Well, what's happened to the aircon? Because it's bloody hot in here. So, a couple of things uh, you'll realise. One, we can't afford the aircon anymore. That's gone off. And the other thing is that Hugo, that runs the studio, he's fucked off. So, he um, obviously can <laughs> smell a sinking ship. Oh, he's such a so dog. So, we've got Bailey yeah. at the... At the uh, control panel today. Where's he gone? Oh, I don't know. He just didn't show up. So, um, Where are you saying he went north or something? Oh, Ellie Beach he went to. Ah. Uh, oh, well, Hugo, I hope you swim with the Irukandjis. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. We are we're still looking for sponsors. Uh, if you look around the set, you can see that. Any sponsors over there in San Diego? Gits, you sniffed anything out for us, mate? Well, yeah, you, you said there was a guy willing to donate a lounge, didn't you? <laughs> Is that it? I don't know. I, to be honest, I haven't been actively chasing it. I've had to do training and all that other stuff. And the Super Bowl was on. So I've just had other things going on. No, fair enough. Well, what, what's going on with that haircut? You look like Chuck Liddell. That's what I was going for. So well, I'm you've nailed you it. Said that. Yeah, well, I got inspired a little bit by Jimmy Butler. Remember when he did the emo look? Mm. Yeah. Just for photos. And then they're the photos for the whole year. So this is my look for the year. And I just haven't had time to whip it up. So have they already done the photos for you? And that's... Yeah. Yeah, it's oh, all done. Is that? That's mm. very good. Hey, you sent through a little something during the week on the WhatsApp chat about you losing your head. Yeah. Yeah, what was that? Yeah. It's- um, I didn't actually take the photo, but we did it cross country. Well, we're running on concrete for, I don't know, it's about eight kilometres, I think. Then we had 500 metres swimming. As I've crossed the line, I'd, you know, I just, I'd had enough. Um, and I said a few things to the strength conditioner. What did you say? So then when I came home, my roommate... Um, who's also a coach, Alice Corbusero, he had up a sign saying, missing, Matt Giddo's head, if found it, please return to this this house. Yeah, it got, got the best of me, that, that run, but anyway. So what, what did you actually did say? Did you? Commissioner, we're tight. Did you get What's physical, that? a bit like Travis Kelsey on Andy Reid? Or? No, no. What about that, though? Yeah. No, it wasn't like that. No, it was just like passing... And then saying something like, oh, well, I hope I tore every muscle in my body for that Mickey Mouse exercise or something. <laughs> I can't remember. When you sent that through, I thought, geez, if you've lost your head, I can't imagine what I would have done. <laughs> oh, you would have saved me. Everyone's looking at me like, who's, the pre- who's that Aussie? So I was look he- like a saint if you were here. Were you the best back in the day, Biv, at giving sprays to coaches? Or I used to just try and get in the strength and conditioning coach's head by just saying it's reckless. I'd say, keep going, boys. Keep going until it's a grade three hemi. <laughs> And as soon as you put a scar, like a, a soft, um, soft tissue injury into the, uh, the S and C's coach and head uh, in their heads, geez, what? It's contagious. I think it's hot. In here um, is the answer. It's then that, really then all really of a sudden hot. they start to shave off a set or a couple of reps or whatever, just because they don't want to be the ones that are responsible for someone getting soft tissue injury. So uh, I always used to plant the seed and then sure enough, and the, then buddy water it. The S and C coach would knock it back one or two reps. Yeah, nice. and Drew give you a little nudge. Mm. And go, but all the boys would be like, "Oi, Drew, say something," because they didn't want to. I was always the arsehole. But I was happy to play that. <laughs> so, so Johnny Wilkinson last week that was giving tips to young players about applying yourself, your tip is get inside the Well, Johnny head. also said he overtrained. He did. So maybe uh, I was ahead of the curve. You're bang on. Now, hey, you mentioned Alex uh, Corbusiero there. Gets, has he got a little something lined up for us today, mate? What is, what do we, what's he got cooking? He does. Look, it's a, well, it will be a surprise because he's going to do it live. I've not heard it. Uh, but he's been drawing up. He likes to rap just off the cuff, almost like wilding out Nick Cannon styles. So you give him a word and he'll rap about it. He's nice. actually rapped to me in bed six songs, <laughs> um, which was a different story. But anyway, we've got one about the Six Nations. So he's going to perform that live. Yes. Like a Six Nations rap, but get it? Yes. Yeah, yeah like a rap a, up. A but rap without the W. Yeah. Clever. Exactly. But I'm oh, sure no, it will be a W. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be a winner. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Very good to see what you did there. Okay, fantastic. That's coming up later. What a tease. Yeah. Mac Hansen, Alex Corbusiero rapping. Um, I mean, what else could we, you want? Some aircon. Yeah, it's fucking hot. <laughs> fucking hot. It is. 
fucking hot. So, pop. let's get into this. <laughs> oh, <what is> that? <laughs> Your milk's turn, mate. <laughs> yeah, a touch. But obviously, just a reminder, I'm down to 72 litres. Yeah. And, um, mate, it looks oh. like... Oh, that, you're kidding. <laughs> what are you, mate, I'm going to get through the fucking mate. milk. Oh, oh wow. Wow. No, thanks. Anyway, milk crates aren't free. That's, That's so the lesson good. we've learned. Socials, kickoffs and kick-ons. We are everywhere. We are Twitter. We are X. We are YouTube. We are Insta. Um, make sure you get on. Follow us. Like and subscribe. In particular on YouTube. That episode last week, Johnny Wilkinson, which was an epic episode. I yeah. think we all agree. Gets... One of the all-time eps you've seen. I know you watch a lot of so, rugby union no, podcasts. Epic. That was epic. Loved it. Go back and watch it. If this is your first one, go back and watch that one. Uh, a lot of people watching but not liking and subscribing. Yeah, you're big on the, the liking and subscribing, aren't you? It's about building a community. Well, I feel like it's more about building your self-confidence <laughs> <laughs> and self-esteem. There's a little bit of that. And I'll go through that with my therapist on Wednesday, <laughs> which I'm excited about. Uh, yes, go back, watch that. That first ep, 27,000 views. When you think nobody knows we've changed our name, nobody knows we exist. Yeah, so spread the word, please. Spread the word. Um, and uh, yeah, make sure you like and subscribe. <laughs> and we will schmidt it in, our new catchphrase. Very good. Hey, um, guys, we're going to start with a bit of uh, Australian rugby news. Obviously, the Super Rugby just 10 days away. Next week on the show, we have a couple of Waratahs coming in for all you mad tar bastards. Uh, we've got Ned Hannigan and Fergus Lee Warner. They'll be oh, on the new set. new recruit, yeah. Yeah, and apparently they're a lot of fun. So, um, we will uh, we'll touch a lot on that next week. There's no Six Nations, so we'll have a lot more time to go through all the Super Rugby clubs. Um, we are going to be down at Super Rugby, sorry, Super Round Melbourne. Just a reminder, I've got a little something I need to read here just to get it right. We're doing uh, Sunday night, we are doing a show, the podcast in yep. there at the end of the Super Round. You've done the last few, Drew. You love it down there, Super Round. Yeah, look, it's a great uh, it's a great event, great weekend, three days of, uh, of action and I'm actually looking forward to getting involved in the action off the field this time round. Um, obviously, won't be broadcasting. Um, what, what happened there? <laughs> yeah, oh, just just a, just a bit of a tiff. Um, oh yeah, and then uh, You'll be back. Yeah, so it's good. I'll be in the stands. I'll be beer in hand, and uh, probably by Sunday when we do the show, I won't have a voice. I'm, that's just got, that's just what that's, that's way, just what we're going to have to deal with. Yeah. And you down in Melbourne, sweet? What are you be getting up to? <laughs> well, it's going to be a fairly quiet weekend for the sweet, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sweet will wake up yeah. at four p.m. <laughs> and then. <laughs> Then he'll be nocturnal. Sunday night could be anything. Right? <laughs> we get down there on a Friday afternoon, yeah. don't we? Yeah, first night fever. Oof. We'll get in the airport lounge again, won't oh, we? Yeah. No, that's behind me. <laughs> <laughs> of course, week two. Let me read this. I've got to do this. Of course, week two is Super Round Melbourne. A lot of people have been in touch since our appointment as the CFOs. Chief Fun Officers, just a reminder, each week we'll give more details about the weekend and the Coco Bay. Just a reminder, on that Saturday there is a Coco Bay. You can come and sit with us and in particular a holiday swoop. It's the place to be on Saturday. We will have food and beer vouchers to give away and also tickets for the Sunday games so you'd be mad to sit anywhere else. Listen to this for a bloody deal. Tickets in our bay are just $27 for How adults. much? $27. Is that, all? is that fair, Income? Giving them away. Ollie, is that a typo? Fuck me, $27. And Ticket Tech is the place to get them. They would have liked that promo from me, wouldn't they? <laughs> the link is all over socials. Come and sit with us. Um, guaranteed to have a good time. I reckon. Yeah, guaranteed. If not, Swoop will give you 27 bucks. <laughs> but it'll be in kittens money. <laughs> <laughs> you have to go there to spend it. Yeah, old kitty vouchers. <laughs> you, can, you can exchange yeah. that. I'm pretty sure at most banks. Yeah. Um, all right, let's chat a little bit of Super Rugby. There was a few comments on our videos during the week about the Melbourne Rebels and the Brumbies. Now, obviously, a couple of you guys are former Brumbies greats. Um, you all played against the Rebels. Talk of the Rebels. Well, the Rebels have gone into voluntary administration. So, I mean, we don't need to get too deep into this, but people do want to know what you think about the situation down there. Um, obviously, we don't want to lose the Rebels. They're in the comp for 2024. Um, I've read here the Rebels are reported to need a bailout of around 500000 in order to pay players and staff. So, well, we don't have the money for you, that's for sure. But um, <laughs> well, what, what do they do down there? How do they survive? Yeah, look, it, it's, a, it's a tough one, right? Like, and there's... Whatever we say here, there's going to be people that disagree with some of it, all of it, whatever it might be, but... We, we don't really know all the ins and outs of it. We don't get to see the books or why or how they've found themselves in this position. Um, obviously, there's another conversation going, whether we're, better, we're stronger as Rugby Australia with five teams, four, three, or whatever that, that case may be as well. But the simple fact is, is that as a game here in Australia at the moment, we're not flush with cash. 
And then if that's from the Rugby Australia level. And if you go further down to that, to the, the franchise and the state teams, they're not flushed either, clearly. Um, and regardless of whether we think we need five teams, if they can't financially support themselves or if Rugby Australia then can't come in and support them, then we clearly have to look at something else. And that it happened years ago when the Western Force were, were um, you know, I guess it distinguished from the Super Rugby at that time. Twiggy Forest has been able to come in and, and, and help prop them up. But if the clubs can't generate their own income, then it then leans on Rugby Australia. And at the moment, you know, they're not flush with cash as we know as well. So it might not even be about where we're positioned, if it's better for us to have five, four or three. It might just literally come down to financial um, positions of of the, the entities that run the game. And um, clearly whatever was going on down at the Rebels, um, you know, they found themselves in a precarious position and a pretty deep hole. Um, what we want to see is that all the players, staff, everyone that's involved, um, you know, get what they, they signed for and, and hopefully find other um, other employment or if, you know, if the Rebels don't continue, I don't know what's going to happen moving forward. But um, it's never, look, it's just, it's just always a pretty messy situation when one of these types of things happen. When any company, let alone a sporting team, goes into administration, it's not great. Um, but hopefully we find uh, an outcome soon and that's communicated clearly and um, and we can start getting some, some feel-good stories about the game because uh, it feels like for the last, I don't know how long, there just seems to be something else that c- keeps coming at the game that, um, you know, makes it, I guess it's difficult to talk about. Absolutely. Now, the other ones, obviously, are the Brumbies, um, which Brumbies chairman Matthew Nobbs, he's shut down allegations that the Brumbies are sliding into voluntary administration like the Rebels. Um, he said, why would we go into VA as we don't have any substantial debt? The only debt we have is to RA. That was initially a loan and now has been converted into an interest-bearing loan. Uh now, Sweep, can you explain that to everybody? Because <laughs> I'm not sure what oh, that zero means. Idea. Zero idea what that is. Okay, great. Gits, have you any idea? You're a former, one of the all-time great Brumbies. Yeah, so basically my understanding is that Rugby Australia is just going to let them walk away with that money. Sweet. We heard it here first. Is that what it means? No, I actually don't know. I, uh, <laughs> I don't know anything. Over, no, but we're only um, – I'm getting the news obviously a bit later – but I think I echo kind of Drew's um, thoughts there that hopefully we can get past this and, and find a good solution. Obviously, I feel for the, the players and the staff uh, that potentially, in Melbourne's case, that might be losing their employment or won't actually get what they signed for this year. But I just want to move past this and have a resolution and then something that's clear which shows where Australian rugby is heading and we can have some positive news. Because even American players over here are saying, you know, what's going on with Australian rugby back there? Like, is it going to survive? So it's actually, um, you know, a sport that I would love to survive and I think it will survive, but it's just, I think we just need to find a solution, move forward, show a blueprint that everyone can get behind and we can start talking about, you know, the great things in our game. Absolutely. Well, I mean, there was talks of... uh Rebels being in talks with one of the Kiwi teams about a potential merger. You know, people always throw up the option of the Brumbies and the Rebels merging. Like, I mean, who knows if there's actually any truth to any of this or if it's just, you know, someone in the media has, has you know, suggested it and people have run with it. Who knows? But I think, you know, much is always the case is clarity is what's needed. Um, firstly, the Rugby Australia and the powers to be need to get clarity on the situation in Melbourne, uh, find a way that they feel they can get out of that situation whether that means that the Rebels exist beyond 2024 or, or whatever that case may be. But um, it's it's all fine for us as supporters to sit here and say, we need five teams and we can't let the Rebels go or we can't let the Brumbies go or whoever it is. But if it's, it comes down to finance, as we know, it comes yeah. down to finance, right? Like if if we can't prop the game up and, and we're, we're always continuously, you know, as Rugby Australia having to dip in financially who aren't in a position to dip in financially, then we're going to have to look at alternatives and sometimes those alternatives are going to hurt. All right, let's do some positive news now. That's enough of that negative stuff. Can I, can I give a positive? Yeah. Yes, go. It's- Alex Corbacera's just had a plunge bath just to spark himself up. <laughs> 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 All right. We, how long have we got? How long till I need to get to him? How long does it last, Gits? He's about 12 minutes. You good for 12 minutes, Corbs? Yeah, he's just doing sit-ups. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully he's got his shirt off when he's doing this rap. 
<laughs> Mate, he's got oh. his pants off when he gets in the plunge. Oh, I can't oh, wait for that. Corbs, he can, he can rap. I've he can drop show a beat. some yeah. of his stuff, Drew. Yeah, well, I, I saw on his, uh, on his Insta that he can spit some bars, and I thought, you know, with Gits uh, staying there and, and using his studio, I'm like, let's, what, what let's if, get him in. What if we are the place that has launched the next big rapper? What well, if he's the next? That's what I've been feeding him with all week. <laughs> I've been telling him that we've got no sponsors or nothing, but this is his opportunity. Basically, One we're shot. using him. <laughs> One opportunity. Yeah. Will you capture it? Okay. Bernard Foley, <laughs> he hasn't ruled out a return to the Wallabies under Joe Schmidt. I think... Um, you're all mates with Bernie. Yeah, I think Nasta. that's great news. We remember that tweet he sent after the Wales loss, which we all loved. It didn't have to be like this. Yeah. Mm. So that, that was like that. That cut deep. That Ooh, did, that didn't was it? good. That was good timing. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm, same sort of thing. I think Quade hasn't closed the door either. Mm. I think these guys have. You know, it, it might be that you know, I think what we what we probably saw is we went with youth at the Rugby World Cup 2023. Um, I think all, all like a lot of those players would have benefited from having some experience around them. Whether someone like a Bernard or a Quaid or whoever it might be, James O'Connor is also still around as well. That comes in and you know may not play in the ten jersey, but might play a role in a squad. Could be you know on the bench or whatever it might be. But I think there's there's definitely a place for players like that with that um, that much experience. Given the what happened at the Rugby World Cup 2023 off the back of that, helping them with conf- confidence, with clarity, with, you know, knowledge of an understanding of their role. I, I think, um, I think you know, it'd be at least a conversation that needs to be had from our mate Schmitty. And missing out on an opportunity like that for Bernard, like it only builds the chip on your shoulder. Mm. I and mean, he's got so much to prove. I mean, he, he'll be going back to his competition in Japan, performing for Kubota. Um, and he's got lots of drive. Like he's a competitor. I'd like to see him in the fit, like in the mix for for the Lions series. And then there's other guys like um, we've got Gitz. He's hey, you know, hey. early forties. He's not he's not finishing Come up on. just yet. For those of you listening, he's giving a thumbs up. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> it won't end for that bloke. Um, you know, and also a mate of ours that um, um, got some good news over the weekend. You know, I'm sure he's oh, he's yeah. eyeing off uh, eyeing off Kurt, the lines as Kurt, well. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's motivated to, to finish his career, whether, where, where that may be. But, um, you know, I guess it's now a good opportunity for him to, to move forward and, and hopefully close out on, on what's been a great career with uh, you know, adding to his legacy. Absolutely. Now, uh, somebody at the other end of their career is Max Jorgensen. Mm-hmm. And good news for everybody that Jorgo, he said he's committed to rugby union and that um, he thought the Rugby World Cup was a learning experience, which is great news to have him there. Um, let me read a couple of his quotes here. Uh, having your own fans booing you, you're sort of sitting there like, what do I even think? They're booing us like they're meant to be our fans. It's obviously hard, but as I said, I think it's going to make you a better player in the long run. As shit as it was at the moment, how shit of a campaign it was, I think a lot of the boys are a, a lot better for it. Do you think that's the case? Do you think swear he signed elsewhere after those comments. <laughs> <laughs> well, he hasn't. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it didn't read like... Geez, excited to sign on. <laughs> oh, wait. Sorry. No, that was Marky Mark that said that. <laughs> joke. That's a joke. Um, yeah, he's pumped for it. Did you ever have an experience like that where you were in the shit, the fans were booing you, everything mm. was against you, and then you actually took that and turned that into a positive? Well, I was part of the Waratahs team. I think it might have been 2010. Um, I got injured, I think, in maybe April, so six weeks or something into the into the season did my ankle but um i oh know that was 2011 maybe i was just i don't know whenever it was don't quote me on the numbers but we were getting booed off the off the field at, um at the sfs and then i don't know who it was at, um new south wales headquarters thought it was a great idea to host a fan forum and it was myself michael <laughs> Foley, the head coach uh and and a couple of the boys just basically sat down the front of this auditorium <laughs> whilst the fans just <laughs> bloody teed off on us um and you know rightly so like it was something you know in some ways it was good to kind of really feel the sentiment that the the fans had and the members and you know of course we know that they spend their hard earned to come out and support and they didn't feel like we we're going out there and representing the jersey like they thought that um we, we should have been um but geez that was a tough night just going in there sitting on a stool, big auditorium of, of disgruntled fans, just uh, giving them an opportunity to, to vent. And um, obviously things turned around at the Waratahs. It wasn't immediate by any means, but, um, you know, I guess a few years later, you boys went on and won the thing. But um, I understand that the, um, what, what Max is saying. It's tough when you're getting booed by your supporters. Um, you know, I, I think, remember, it gets in Toulon, 
I used to get stuck into a couple of the supporters in Toulon when they, you know, because we had some good success and then there was a moment where we weren't going so well and I'd go back at them on Twitter and I said, you know, for me, there's fans who are on you when you're, when you're doing well, but supporters are on you when you're doing well and when you aren't doing well, right? And I, I said, you're a fan. And then, um, and this guy only spoke French and I only spoke English, so we basically invited one another to meet in the car park the next day. <laughs> <laughs> and then he brought a translator and we were just sort of going at each other in the car park. And in Seriously? the end, yeah, in the end, we end up hugging it out and having a photo. And he kind of, he's like, nah, we've, we've ironed it all out. And, uh, and then we move forward and he was a lot more positive on Twitter. <laughs> I need to make a mini series about your life. They <laughs> Jeff, definitely do. Um, let me just get into the last bit of positive news, which is, well, interesting news rather than positive it's this mass exodus from the roosters from the sydney roosters it's a rugby league club obviously if you're overseas it's there's rugby league and rugby union here so you've now got um obviously um joey manu has said that he's interested well, joseph still leave first yes of course yeah so, so joseph went and then now it looks like joey manu he's said to the roosters he's done at the end of 2024 wow. and then also this uh noise around angus Crichton. Mm. Uh, as much as he's not going to the force talk of uh french rugby for angus well, you know, it doesn't surprise me that uh, Angus would be looking at French rugby, and I would even think even more so to be a bit more uh, targeted. Is Jack Maddox at – is at Poe, right? That's right. Because those two guys are best mates. So I wouldn't be surprised if, say, Angus ends up at, at, at Poe with his best mate. I think they went to school together um, each and every year when uh, Angus finishes his, um, his NRL season. He goes over there and stays and visits um, Jack. So I would – I'd be – I wouldn't be surprised if he, he turned up in the same team as Jack Maddox to be able to see out his career playing with his best mate and experiencing something else, obviously, you know, earning a Euro uh, along, along the way. Joey Manu is, um, I mean, the guy's at the top of his game. Obviously, with the Roosters, they've just got, they've probably got a bit of salary cap pressure. Uh, you know, they're always successful. They've always got the best of the best players, which means you've got to pay those players. Um, Tedesco is going to fill up that fullback role, which reportedly Manu wants to take. So he's still going to be there for a couple of years after um, Joey's uh, contract runs up. So, but then the, the other side of it is he was saying he wants to play for the All Blacks. So at the moment, you can't go to France, like French rugby, and play for the yeah. All Blacks. So I don't know where he'll end up. But, um, you know, seeing these guys, you know, good athletes, good footy players play rugby. I mean, it doesn't seem to convert it. that way that well. Like, obviously, Benji Marshall famously went to the Blues and he didn't do that great. And then, obviously, Roger Tuovasa-Shek, who was, at the time, arguably, you know, one of the best players in the league, he tried to go with the All Blacks, played a few games, but didn't really make a dent. Like, I feel like it goes better the other way, or am I just tossing well, that up? Not well, necessarily. It's got, it's got a lot to do with the positions you transition into. Like, Benji Marshall probably wasn't as successful story as, you, as you'd like it to be because he went straight into a 10 role. You know, having to direct and run a team... Um, you know that's that's very difficult. Where you guys guys are like, uh, I'm no d- no doubt that Manu will that he'll he'll do very well. Like that guy's an absolute beast. He's an athlete. He will, he rely heavily on his athletic ability, and that'll help. You know, it'd be interesting to see where Angus Crichton plays. I, I I'd mean, so they'd probably have to play him at twelve. What do you reckon, Giddy? Yeah, I mean, oh, I don't know. Twelve also, you need to be able to ball play a little bit more. Mm. So he's more of a hole puncher. You'd probably say thirteen, but then defensively, there's some. There's some issues there. I think, obviously, the biggest thing to transition, it's almost like for rugby union um, and talking with league guys, they were saying that the biggest adjustment was that someone's just 10 metres away. So it's basically at the dummy half, your marker. You've got a whole team of markers that are coming at you. Mm. Whereas for us, if we were to play rugby league, it's basically like a line out. So the the fence is back 10 metres and you can get the ball back 10 metres. You've got more time with the ball to create things. So I think it's just getting used to that side of things. But physically, obviously, rugby league's a lot more, a um, lot more impact, a lot more of a contest um, around the wrestle and defense and everything else. But yeah, I know Angus Crichton. He's um, as Drew said, he's very tight with um, Jack Maddox and Paul, and also Lindsay Stevens. But Lindsay Stevens playing third grade. At, East rugby, so I don't think he wants to play with him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Giddy, son of a league, are you a former Raiders great? Did any NRL clubs ever come knocking with a bag full of cash for you? Um, there was one time that someone from West Tigers rang my dad. I think it was like 2005, and they rang him, and I didn't even know what the offer was. But Dad said, "You're not even close." So I don't know what he was trying to hit him up for. He probably wanted something for himself, a new truck or something, but I never actually got the offer. But that's as close as I got. Any of you boys, any 
Uh, I had an approach from the Bulldogs when I was at, in year 12, the end of year 12, to maybe join their jersey flag set up. Um, and, and it was sort of the, the Bulldogs or, or the uh, Queensland Reds Academy and I went with the Reds and probably not a bad career decision. Uh, I grew up playing league, um, didn't really make reps or anything like that. So I, I didn't think, I mean, there was never really a thought once I kind of started to, to progress in rugby to go back to league. You know, I was pretty comfortable in, in the game. The two completely different styles and suits, you know, two different types of players. So Any other codes, AFL? Tennis, no nah. cricket. Okay, fantastic. Hey, uh, how's Corbs going there, Gits? Is he? Mate, what's he doing now? He's, he's chin pumped ups? it out since he got out of the cold plunge. He's been rehearsing upstairs. Shall okay, do you want to give him a shout? Because I think it's time for the Six Nations summation. All right, for our Six Nations summation today, it is the mad beats and the mad rhymes of the former England prop. British and Irish Lions champion. It's Alex Corbacero. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's do it. Bar in the booth. <laughs> I've been waiting for the Six Nations, running which nation's gonna make a declaration and which nation's gonna get stuck in the basement because they've been too complacent. I've been waiting for the Six Nations, wondering which nation's gonna make a declaration and which nation's gonna get stuck in the basement because they've been too complacent. The Irish, they love to score tries. Even with no sex, then they play so wise. Crossing their T's, dotting their I's. Best in the comp and I respect their eyes. Fair play, Andy Farrell came to the Six Nations with a gun barrel. Everyone else brought a bow and arrow. Next up, it's a Celtic battle. Scotland, Big Jim said it's now or just never. Need to show you can win in any weather. Finn Russell, play clever, or you'll regret it forever. Then onto the English, whilst dragging fire, they just extinguished. Top dog status, they have relinquished, but they still look like a team that's distinguished. Now France, title hopes in Marseille staggered, but after Murrayfield, they walked tall with swagger. Can they climb back up the table ladder, or will it be another Le Bleu dream shattered? I've been waiting, 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 I've been waiting. I've been waiting for the Six Nations, wondering which nation's gonna make a declaration and which nation's gonna get stuck in the basement, cause they've been too complacent. I've been waiting for the Six Nations, wondering which nation's gonna make a declaration and which nation's gonna get stuck in the basement, cause they've been too complacent. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> it's so Holy good. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Never Corpse, that was amazing. That's gone. Yeah. That's gone. I didn't yeah. have enough time to learn it, unfortunately. No, mate, that's that was epic. Thank you so much. Mate, we're going viral. No yeah. <laughs> One take wonder. Let's that's do it. it. <laughs> Can you remember our little <laughs> show, Corpse, when you go massive? Just remember where it happened. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag yeah, yeah, Coco. Okay. <laughs> Hashtag 2025. See you soon. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you after the next round. <laughs> yeah, to your boy. Thanks, Corbs. Take he's got it easy, lads. He's got, yeah. Giddy, just let him know he's got two weeks to come up with another awesome one. <laughs> You've got two weeks. How good was that? Yeah, <laughs> so good. I didn't. You don't actually expect it to be awesome. That was fucking awesome. Yeah. No, I, I'd seen a couple of things that he'd done um, for England. I think maybe some of their sponsors and then a couple just spinning some rhymes on the street over there in America and stuff. Like, team bus oh, action. Yeah. 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 He helped us um, yeah. put together our our team song over in, uh, over in the MLR, the Giltinis, to the rhyme of the Californication song. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, he's... He's talented. He's, he's the good. real deal. Giddy, how's the mood over there, mate? Is it... Pretty pumped. Pretty thick? I, think, I want to head to a nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> you were very good in the background, mate. You were... Yeah, uh, you, yeah you like that? Yeah. You like B-Rabbit. <laughs> No cheddar bob. Yeah. No, yeah, <laughs> shooting yourself on the foot. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Very good. Hey, um, where to from there? Well, only up. Joining us uh, very shortly, Ollie. Have we got him on the line? Just in the meantime, I actually need Tommy. Do you mind coming over here and putting a bit more air in my ring? <laughs> get your lips around my ring, please. Yeah. So for those of you listening, uh, Tommy is now blowing air into uh, Biv's hemorrhoid ring. If you don't mind making your way around the room, because mine there's a bit of air seepage out of mine as well. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Blow air where's in the? General. That'd be nice. Where's the? Where's the hole? Is there a way you can sit on it? And he gets behind you and blows that. Up? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! It's just like a little um. 
I oh, know, like oh, a, it's a donut. Valve. Yeah. Yeah. Little yeah, valve. Yeah, yeah, normal valve. It's fantastic. We'll um, fi- we'd find a way, though, Goit. Now, oh, yeah, um, yeah, no, oh, that's good. Six Nations, as we established last week, is the number one comp in the world in terms of international footy. Drew, you agree? Well, that's what we keep getting told. <laughs> All right, joining us now, um, it's about to be uh, the premier winger in the uh, Northern Hemisphere international comp mm. but i tommy has written an intro this is what he's doing now okay tommy erskine so um our special guest this week also hails from the nation's capital but now calls the emerald <laughs> Isle home <laughs> in a very timely manner this man jumped off hmas shit show and is now oh. sitting pretty on the bow of ss dynasty destination trophy town to go along with the calm waters and the clear passage this man can drink like a fish has ink like a pirate and has always known how to use a sextant <laughs> Nestled away in Galway, he now plays for a team called Canucked. But we all know he's the bloke that left the Brumbies and now they are confucked. Mate. Mate. Was he, was he in a good mood for this one? No, I don't think he was, Mac. Please put your hands together for a bloke that has more Man of the Match awards than Drew has lawyers. It is the one and only <laughs> Mac Hanson. Mac Daddy. Hey, Mac Daddy. Daddy. Yeah. That's very good. Thanks for having me, lads. No, thanks for uh, getting up early and, uh, and jumping on. Oh, getting home yeah, early. Yeah, as you can probably see, the hair's not in great shape. It's actually better than Gitz's, at least. So I'll take that. <laughs> oh, mate. Well, it's very early. Don't start. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mate, how, how's the head? Because I heard a, top, a possible rumour that maybe you had a pint or two last night. I had one or two. I had one or two. Um, I was just enjoying my first Six Nations game, uh, watching as a fan. So, mm. uh, in... Typical fashion had yeah a couple of Guinness. Um, actually had a my first hot dog in God knows how long. Oh really? That went down tree. Yeah. Um, yeah no mate it was good it's good heads Grant it'll be fine. Hey Mac did you see the vision of you walking into the ground? Some dodgy uh, fan filmed you walking in with your jersey on, and it's gone. I did. I yeah. Did, yeah. So it's just explain this jersey. It's got Sexton written on the back and then sixty nine. Is that right? <laughs> Yeah, pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Um, <laughs> maybe some some kids might find it a little bit hard to understand, but they'll get it when they're older. Um, Dinner for two, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> uh, very good. And was it an enjoyable game? Obviously, let's do a score check here. This is my job. Thirty-six nil to uh, Ireland for the first yep. time. Here's a stat for you, Mac. First time Ireland ever kept Italy scoreless in a Six Nations match. Wow. So congrats. There you go. Good atmosphere out there in the stadium, mate. It was, was. Yeah. The um No, there's a really good buzz around at the moment. Obviously after the win had a really big win in France last week as well. So yeah. um I think they're aiming towards another actually I don't wanna throw the voodoo on it, but um hopefully things go well and people are expecting big things from this team again. Mate, how was it for you? Like you just mentioned, there it was your first time watching uh, your boys play in a Six Nations game. So, you know, you're injured at the moment, but how was it just, um, you know, sitting in the stands and watching them? Yeah, it's pretty shit house to be honest. <laughs> I, um, I was, I was thinking, oh, this will be great, and then I sat down, and was actually watching them, and I was like, this sucks. Yeah. I'd rather be involved, but um, as I said, saying that they're they're doing really well at the moment, which is um, it's it's good as well to. To see the team they're, they're kind of turned into. What is it about this team? What do you got? Yeah. Oh, no, you go get him. What, what, what? I want to know what he's got going on over there to the side. Yeah. <laughs> My dog's going to stop at 6 a.m. Oh, the dog, of course. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mac, what is it about this Irish side? Because obviously, Australian rugby is at a stage now where we're looking at Ireland and we're hoping that what Ireland did in eight years that we can do in eight years' time. But you're in and amongst it. What is it that makes it number one in the world? Um, oh, just the environment they've made us. It. Like it's, we talk about it all the time when you go into camp. Like you actually look forward going into camp. I used to, look, I remember when I was going into twenties and stuff like that. I used to dread it. I used to hate going up for any of that sort of stuff. But this one, you really look forward to. They've just made it like so. When you're working, you're working, and then um, when it's time to switch off and have a bit of fun. Uh, you can do that as well. So I think that's just really, really key to, to why we're doing so well. Mate, obviously, Andy Farrell, the coach, he's a big part of um, you know the success you guys are having. But 
What is it about your relationship with Andy Farrell? You're obviously pretty close. You've, you've got his face tattooed on your quad. Um, like, tell us how that came about, but also how you got such a good um, relationship with your coach. Um, I got to, I got to stay in the team somehow, mate. So <laughs> it's, it's the way I took the the road I travelled. Um, no, he's yeah, he's just been he's been unreal. He's uh, he can just make you run through a wall. That bloke, like his his pregame speeches are always on point. It's like something out of a movie. I want, I, I honestly wonder if he's practicing them before or what. Um, <laughs> But no, he's been really good, and he, he just kind of lets me be me and lets me play my game as well, so um, shows a lot of faith in, in everybody. At the, at the Brumbies, you didn't get much of an opportunity. Do you just think that the styles maybe in Ireland suited you better or uh, the coaches had more faith in you? Like, what, what do you think? Like, because you, as soon as you went over to Ireland, you pretty much adapted really quickly. You were playing for Ireland relatively quickly as well and you're playing well on the international stage what was it that clicked so well for you compared to being in australia what what was the main difference that you could see um i think you just get you just get so many more opportunities over here because there's so many more games like yeah you can play close to 30 games in a season so they kind of have to rotate the squad um i think that's kind of the main the main difference is you know you're playing what 12 12 games of super and then you got a big break where you go back to club and sort of stuff like that. Where here you just got so many high level games to play that yeah they need to rotate the squads. I'm interested to know in terms of some of the feedback you've received from either the was it Canuck Canuck coach or yeah. from Faz. That's so um, that's so off as well. In terms yeah, well, of how yeah. do you say it? Is it a Connacht? Connacht. That's what I, that's what I say. Oh, we're close. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like you guys are saying the Canadian Canucks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Canuck. Um, yeah, we'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> Matt, was there a bit of feedback from the coaches that resonated well f- from you? You know, like in terms of driving that self belief, because you did play a couple of games from the Brumbies, but it seems like as soon as you turned up to Ireland, was it the culture or just the feedback or the relationship you had with the group or just the, like you said, the fact that you played a shitload of football and you're able to, I guess, develop your game week in week out? Yeah, it's actually like, it's a bit of a funny one. I got, I actually got dropped my first week back with Connick, so I played the first game and then I got dropped, um, and it was the day before our winger did his calf. So I went back in. So I kind of just went in with the um kind of just went in with the, the headspace and this could be my last game for a while, so I may as well just fucking enjoy it. Um and then yeah, then once I, I, that after that game I played well and they kind of just had a lot of, a lot more faith in me as well after that point too. Mate, what about your just your approach? Like what what's really nice to see, um, you know, is you just you're unapologetically yourself. Uh, you clearly enjoy the game, but you also enjoy yourself off the field, and and you seem to be well received by the Irish fans and the Connacht fans as well. So, like, how is it that you've got the confidence just to to go out there and and obviously perform, but also just be true to yourself off the field and still have that sort of larrikin attitude and um, and and make it work both on and off the field. Um, I'd say it probably helps. I'd, I'd be slightly on the spectrum or something. I'd have to be. Um, so that kind of helps. <laughs> I think they all That's are, Matt. All the ones that I've met. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Mac, I want to talk um, the – what sort of party was it when you won the Grand Slam for the Six Nations? How long did it go for? Um, how silly was it? And we all saw the video of you going around to Ring Rose's house. Can you talk us through Yeah. That? Um, uh, it was big. It was three of the three of the biggest days. I can remember two of them. There's one that that gets real hazy. Um, <laughs> but no, it was good. We went. We so Gary's dad's house was the third of the the trips to dad's houses. We just hired a party bus, and we thought instead of going straight to the club we were going to, may as well take advantage of it. So we end up spending about three hours on this party bus going around Dublin. And I think we ended up picking up about five or six dads from from the team, um, and they ended up they ended up they weren't hard to to get out of the house just quietly either. Um, didn't take much convincing. So we, yeah, ended up going about three days, and then I had to take off to um, I had to take off to Amsterdam of all places for my holiday oh. next day. So oh. yeah, oh, it was yeah. a tough tough week. Tough week. Would it be fair to say Amsterdam's also a little bit hazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I actually went. <laughs> Very good. Now, um, what we're going to do here, Mac, this is obviously a Six Nations summation. So we're trying to um, 
keep the Northern Hemisphere interested in what we're doing. So we, if we just, if you don't mind, we're just going to quickly run through the other two games that took place. Um, big controversial ending, obviously, to the Scotland-France game. Scotland going down 16-20. to 20, And that TMO decision at the end um, obviously went up to the TMO. He, um, he said that, well, yeah, I could see it grounded. And then he went, oh, wait, let me have a look at one more shot. And then decided, oh, well, I don't know. And then it went back to the uh, referee and then it was ruled no try. And so the whole of Scotland's not happy. Fair enough. Mm. Um, you get mm. nervous when they're not happy because we've all seen Braveheart. Yeah. Um, do you, what did you make of it, Drew? Did you? <laughs> yeah, look, I can understand uh, the Scottish frustration. I mean, I, it, I think it comes down to the wording. It was on field decision from Nick Berry was that he had them held up. So to, to overturn that to make it a try, it needed to be conclusive evidence. And then, like you say, there was a bit of ambiguity there from the TMO. Thought he saw it, didn't see it. Obviously, that means it's probably not conclusive. When it, that, you know, so then it goes to Nick Berry's on-field decision being a no try. Um, you know, I've seen plenty of stuff on Twitter about you know still shots and photos of it looking like it was grounded and all that sort of thing. I, it's tough. Like it's it's what you don't want to be talking about. Um, you know, after such a you know a, a battle like that. Um, France, for me, just aren't really clicking like we thought they probably would have been. Like last week, Ireland did really well against them in Marseille. This week, they kind of, you know, were, you know, I guess you could say probably lucky to get away with that one in the end. Um, but yeah, look, it's, it's, it's one of those things like if you're Scottish, you thought it was a try. If you're French, you thought it wasn't. And if, uh, if you're, in, you're impartial, then you just put your hands on your head. <laughs> what if you're Irish, Mac? What do you reckon? Personally, I thought it was a try. Mm. I don't know. I thought yeah. it I thought it was quite obviously down, but um, yeah, that was my thinking. I feel like referees are the only ones that think different to us, to, <laughs> to most other people, really. Um, yeah, it was, as you said, it's, it's something you don't want to really be talking about, but we are, unfortunately. Um, mm. and just gotta, they've got to be able to do something where a bit of common sense come into it and you can reverse your call. Like. If the ref makes a call, then maybe you need, need to go back to like the old school days where they just make a call. Um, or if they're not sure, they just send it up to the video ref and then he makes the decision rather than, like Drew said, Nick Berry said that he saw it as held up. So unless it's conclusive and you can 100% say with certainty that they scored the try, which I thought Scotland did score the try, but unless you're 100% certain, then you can't actually overturn the decision. So I just, yeah, maybe the wording needs to be revisited. But yeah, I thought it was a good game. Scotland should have been up by a lot more um, and I thought the game, they had control for probably 80% of that game, but just couldn't convert that, that to points. So, well, France defended really well. Um, they had three scrums just before half time, which I thought was pretty telling, you know, for the game there where the French were able to turn them away. But yeah, I mean, as far as the decision goes, I mean, it's made now. You just got to move on. Hey, uh, Mac, if that had happened and you'd been out in the field, would you have been filthy? Would you have given someone a spray or would you have been just walk straight up the tunnel and been okay um uh you, i think everybody yeah you would have been absolutely filthy especially if you know at home um like the scottish fans are crazy enough as it is as it is let alone throwing fuel like that on the fire so um no they're a team that, that think you know they probably thought this was going to be sort of their year most they probably think that every year to be honest but the um <laughs> You know, yeah, as I said, you, you would be spewing, especially yeah. after 80 minutes and, like, the, the one thing that comes down to it is a, is a ref's call. Um, yeah, I don't, know, I don't know what else they can they can do there, really. What what happened to benefit of the doubt? No, that, no, that went out for gone. a while, yeah. Well, the other thing... Should I, it be brought back in? Because, it should. I mean, it's quite conclusive, Yeah, you know. Well, I was also reading today that it used to be... Giddy, what you were suggesting, it used to be that, and then all the coaches complained. And so then they wanted to put more onus on the referee's decision on the field so that the referee has to make a decision and then it goes up. So it was that originally and then they've switched it back and now people are... Anyway, um, God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Should we talk about we some rugby? the answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Um, the French, is there a bit of a, uh, well, let's call it a World Cup hangover? Did you guys get that in 2016 after going so close and then... In 2015, was there a year after that where... No, I had the hangover for probably a week or so, but <laughs> that's probably about it. You know what I mean. Are they now suffering as in their home country, they were kind of favourites, and then they lost in the quarters, and now 
you know, scraping home? No, not necessarily. I think it's just a matter of that, you know, after a big campaign like that, yeah, it was, I mean, disappointing for them to, you know, bow out in the quarterfinals, but they have to go back to their respective clubs. And they've gone all the way through Christmas and they're back in this program now. So there's probably just a, a transitional challenge there around from going back to their clubs and then finding their systems again that, that is the French attack and French defence. And they've just struggled to get off the mark, but clearly pretty lucky on the weekend. Did... Mac, was there any sort of hangover from the World Cup for you guys? From all, I mean, I'm not talking a literal hangover. I mean, was there any... Uh, I mean, it doesn't look like there was any doubt in your camp. Um, no, because I, I haven't been, have been in the camp, but from like talking to the lads and whatnot, no, it doesn't seem like it. I think, uh, you know, in this line of work, you kind of got to be able to move on quick and not let things hold over your head. So, uh, yeah, as you said, like it looks like it's going well and... From speaking to everybody, you know, all the they're completely focused on on winning all these games in the Six Nations now. Mate, was there was there like a, a team meeting or a review or anything like that just to summarise what happened at the World Cup so you could kind of park it before you go into the Six Nations? Or was the first time that an Irish squad got together was for you know preparation for the Six Nations? Um, no, it would have been for the for the Six Nations. Yeah, yeah I right. think the coaching staff and everyone had their meetings and whatnot, but we were kind of just, yeah, sent on our way, left to our own devices. So, You know, it's like as a player, each game you go into, you're not thinking about, even the week before, you wouldn't mm. really be thinking about the result or, or what you did. You just focus on on what you're doing. As far as the French is concerned, I don't think there's a hangover. They just played two, well, really good teams. I think Scotland as well, like Max said, this was like their year. Even Big Jim in Corbs' rap. He said it's either now or never. This is like their year. And Ireland, they're obviously on fire. So I just think the French have come up against two very good teams. One, I think they got outclassed and outplayed against the Irish. But the Scottish, they stayed in that game and they ended up getting the victory. So I don't think it's really a, a hangover. It's more so that they're just playing some really good opposition. All right, time to talk some uh, England-Wales. England 16, Wales 14. Uh, pretty amazing game. England, well, at the start of the game, they had... Uh, Four minutes of play with just 13 players. Um, and then when they were down to 13 players, um, Ben Earl, in the 20th minute, he uh, wrapped around the back of the scrum to score an amazing try. Uh, did you boys catch this one? I did. I watched the recap. Um, yeah, I mean, it was just a bit of a scrap. Um, I thought, you know, England slightly improved from last week. But, yeah, Wales are pretty unlucky to, to not win that. I thought they were the better team. Um, it was... Yeah, Ben. I thought Ben Earl had a really good game. He seems to be growing from from week to week, and that obviously that try off the back of the scrum just to run over a couple of blokes. That's, like five. I mean, blokes, when you've got a yeah. dominant eight off the back of a scrum, it just presents so many threats and attack. And as a back, makes your job a lot easier because yeah. you know he's going scoring, forward. He's going forward. But um, yeah, I mean, pretty scrappy game. Um, obviously, a lot different to the other two. But yeah, well done, well done to the pumps. Yeah, like it was a good contest. Um, you know, obviously a close one in the end. But I, I think what it's probably after two weeks of Six Nations, it's probably pretty clear uh, not to put the voodoo on like you said earlier mac but it's probably Ireland's to lose the six nations um you know obviously winning france against france in france uh then you know um italy italy, Gave blew, it like, italy. but just did it did it well right like looked really really strong in that in that performance as well uh plenty of confidence moving forward and if you know looking ahead uh like i i would say that it's it's Ireland's to lose what do you reckon mac um yeah, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to say that. I think it's that. It's the uh, the other two words that that were brought up before that I won't be saying. Um, but no, I think it is, and I think that they kind of we kind of know that now, especially getting away win in uh, in France. It's the next real big test, probably going to be England away. Um, if they can get that job done as well, then. Then you boys um, win the Grand Slam. Oh, mate. He just <laughs> said don't oh, say it. You weren't allowed to say that. it. Mate. I didn't, say, I didn't say it, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, hey, Mac, I want to ask you, obviously uh, there's a bit of a run on the moment of wingers uh, running out and disturbing either, well, conversions. Did you, George Ford had his conversion stopped. Um, Rio Dyer came out and he just knocked it off the tee. Are you now on high alert when you're out there, ready to knock a ball off a tee? Um, I'm not quick enough to, to charge those down, so okay. I'll leave them for the other guy. Yeah. <laughs> what a stupid question. Pity yeah. cheap. Slap. I, don't, I, don't, I, yeah. I don't have the pay. I don't run after him. Fair enough. So did you see that? George Ford, he spoke after and said uh, he just made a lateral movement. And if you watch it, he did kind of take one step to the left. 
yeah, in I mean, order to come in. There's a talking point through the World Cup with Cheslin Colby yeah. uh, up against France. So obviously now there's players that, um, that you know, the quicker ones are probably watching, um, you know, I guess, the, the approach from a kicker, the opposition kicker going into the ball. And then they'll just know those little things that they will do consistently. And the moment they, they do that, it, it's, it's, you know, red rag to a bull type thing. So um, it just means kickers obviously either have to adjust in terms of the depth of where they're kicking from or they just get through their motion a little bit quicker. But I like it. I do. I think it's exciting. Adds a little bit of flair to the conversions. <laughs> uh, so obviously England and Ireland are the only two undefeated sides. Gits, can England win the Grand Slam? I know you're very pro-England. No. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> no, Good I, 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 I um, they have to... Oh, no, they've, they've not lost yet. It just feels like they've lost the way they've been playing. <laughs> no, but I meant like around the, the negativity with uh, how they're playing. Um, mm. I think they're... They're doing pretty well. They scraped well to get back into that game. I think that it looks like their defensive system is coming hard. Like they're, they're rushing really hard um, and they're still trying to come to terms with that. But yeah, I, I'm going, I'm still devastated that Wales lost. Yes. Hey, Matt, we've each chosen a side to barrack for um, during this uh, Six Nations. I've taken Scotland, Swoop is Ireland. Um, and Drew, you're France. And yeah, then because obviously, Swoops Island, I went France. So Yeah. And then <laughs> oh. <laughs> otherwise you would have done Ireland for sure. Yeah, of course. We all wanted Ireland. We argued about that <laughs> and then we settled for yeah. the rest. Um, and then obviously Gitz is Wales. Tommy, um, who he's Italy. And then Ollie, he's actually from England, who's our producer. So he's England. We were thinking that we should start actually doing some, di- uh, some bets. Mm. So if, let's, for example, Scotland, you know, went down to France. So I lost to you. So I have to, I don't know, eat something French that's gross. Or, or if if Ireland go on to get the GS, yeah, maybe Matt gets the Coco show tattooed on the other leg or something. <laughs> hey, anything's Mass possible list. in this club. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mac, what did you make of Stevie Mulrooney's anthem? Yeah, the little fella. Yeah, was that the most epic thing you've ever seen in your life? He um he belted it out, didn't he? Didn't he? He uh. There's a thing here, uh, so he was on a show singing shoulder to shoulder and then Bundy and Pete came out and he nailed it there as well. So now to do it uh do it in front of fifty thousand, fair play to him. And then he gave he gave a good come on Ireland afterwards as well. I don't know if anybody caught that. <laughs> right. He's um no, he was great. Yeah, I saw Andy Farrell get asked that about him after the game and he said, Oh, there was, a, there was a lady standing next to him when he was singing the anthem and he thought he was just, no, it was his mum there just to support the young fellow and then he realised that she was there to actually sing the Italian anthem. <laughs> it, it was no relation. He was just out there, chest out, shoulders back and just belting out Ireland's call. And it was, yeah, I mean, Irish, when you're playing over there uh, or even what we witnessed at the World Cup, um, the way that your fans get around you, whether it's... Um, zombie or you know the, the the anthem and that type of thing it must be pretty special um being part of that what was it like when that footage over at uh, i think um was it half time of the quarter final or something where well, maybe you were inside if it was half time but when you know when your supporters are singing zombie and i think it was changed to bundy wasn't it yeah he claims it was at least <laughs> he um he stopped everybody that was screaming after him um oh mate it was it was hectic when they first started singing zombie i think it, we just just put beaten South Africa, I think, mm. and it was just crazy. Like it was just nothing you kind of really see um, in a rugby crowd. You see a lot of chanting and whatnot in um, in soccer games. Uh, it just felt like, yeah, it was just unreal. South African <laughs> fans, they then claimed zombie for themselves. They went rassy, rassy, yeah. rassy. I uh, did. Was what was? How was that received in the island camp? Uh, typical, making it all about themselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wow. How good. That's there we go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. No, so what I was going to say is I was I was upset when Ireland and France both got knocked out of the World Cup because from a spectator's point of view, they added so much mm. more to the actual town and the atmosphere around the World Cup. So then when they were gone, not that – Southern Hemisphere supporters are boring, but they don't sing. They just cheer when a try is scored or, or or they kick a goal for their own team. They're not creating that atmosphere. It was, I mean, it was electric that quarterfinal weekend. Mm. And then France just dropped the tournament. Like, 
like nothing else, didn't they? They were like, what World Cup? There's a World Cup on. We're like, yeah, that's why we're here still. They just did not give a shit after they lost. We might edit that out, Ollie. That's pretty inflammatory. Um, <laughs> hey, Mac, what we like to do um, on this show is we like to do a little quiz. Unless you boys have got anything else for Mac before we get him on his way. No, Mo, well, firstly, Mac, just how's your injury coming yes. along and when are we going to see you back? Um, yeah, it's good. It's great. I'm, I've still got about another three months until I'm back. I'm actually aiming to be back for um, – around the next time we play Munster uh, away. So a um, little bit of time to go, but uh, look, could be worse, mate. Could be worse. What, how are you staying on top of the skin folds? Because when I have those Guinness pints, it's just like I basically grab it and just slap it on onto the midriff. How are you going with that? Not good. I'm One of these days I'm going to go on a health kick. It's um, <laughs> I've got proper proper mud guts at the moment. It's um, I'm wearing very baggy clothes and the top will not be coming off for three months. Uh I hear you, brother. Prove it. <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> Show Get us it your mud guts. Get it off. Like Both in, uh, of you, Drew, Drew and Mac. Mac. <laughs> Have a mud off. <laughs> mud off. Uh, do you remember the Mackie Shuffle bits? Your Mackie Shuffle? Yeah. It's like the Truffle Shuffle. Yeah. Should he it's show like the us? Truffle shuffle. There's a, there's a lot I remember. <laughs> <laughs> can, um, we, can we see the Mackie Shuffle? I'll I'll get I'll get someone to film it and I'll send it to you. Done. Okay. All right, do it nude for us. We need <laughs> we need viewers. We need, um, it's really cold over here as well. So. <laughs> we've we've got a graphics guy. He can fix it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make you like Drake. <laughs> Jesus, what about that thing? Hey, um, we like to do a quiz on this uh, show, Mac, and we always make it all about our guests, but. Well, what we realised last week with Johnny Wilkinson was that the way it was written was that Johnny knew all the answers. Yeah, dumb. So yeah. we've slightly switched it now in <laughs> that uh, we will. I will ask the three boys, the three Wallabies, the question, and then you can reveal the answer, and then maybe give a bit of a yarn off the back. How's that sound? Okay, sounds good. All right, it's time now for the Coco Quiz. All right, question number one. Mac made headlines for more than just his good footy at the Rugby World Cup. After the game against Romania, Mac gave away all of his kit. What was the brand of Mac's undies? Was it A, Bonds, B, Calvin Klein, C, ATAC, or D, what undies his beautiful Irish balls were blowing in the Bordeaux breeze? Giddy? Oh, I remember I remember they were white. Um, as far as a brand goes, I'm not going to go Bonds. ATAC, I've never even heard of it, so I'm going to have to go with that. See? Yeah, it's weird that you throw something that we'd not heard and not be the answer. So, But I'm going to go with Bonds. Bonds, uh, yep. Oh, I don't, it doesn't strike me as a CK kind of guy, but fuck it, CK. <laughs> okay, hey, Mac, what was the answer? The answer was... Attack undies. Yay. Yay. Ding, ding, ding. I mean, my logic was right, but I just couldn't back it. It was. It was indeed. Okay, question number two. Mac is known for mixing up his hairstyles and colours. In a photo from 2023, Mac is seen with the initials KE shaved on his head. What do you boys think KE stands for? Is it A, Keith Earls, B, King Edward, C, Kill England, or D, Kinder Eggs? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Giddy? Prone to a kinder egg. He's prone to a kinder egg. Uh, Keith Earls. Yeah, I think it's for... his last game or something. Oh, his 100th game, I think, maybe. But either way, it's Keith Earls. Keithy. You don't want kinder eggs, Swoop? Oh. You sure? As much as I like the surprise, no. Okay. Well, Mac, I think we all know the answer. Yeah, everybody thought it was Keith Earls, but it was D, kinder eggs. Fucking knew it. Mate, I told you to go there. Question number three. According to his birth certificate, what is Mac's full first name? A, Macintosh, B, Mackenzie, C, Macbeth, or D, MacBook Pro? <laughs> Giddy? Mackenzie. Mackenzie. Um, just to change that, I'll go Macintosh. Mackenzie. Yeah. It's... The answer, Mac? It is Mackenzie, yes. Ding, ding, ding. Have you got a score check for me, Tommy? Three, one, three to get, two to swoop, two to drew. Ooh, giddy out in the lead. All right, question number four. Mac's mum, Diana, 
is from County Cork, hence his eligibility to play for Ireland. At Blarney Castle in Cork, there is a famous stone called the Blarney Stone. What do the locals say you get if you kiss the stone? Is it A, you will come into wealth? Is it B, you get amazing sex for seven years? C, you get the gift of the gab? Or D, you get herpes, the bad kind? (laughs) (laughs) What's the good kind? (laughs) Tommy, what's the good kind? Is it face or down the... (laughs) Face. Face is the good kind. (laughs) Uh, All right, um, Giddy, you're up. Uh, I'll go with seven years sex. Seven years sex. sex. I'm going to go the gift of the gab. Gift of the gab. I'll go the wealth. The wealth. Mac, do you know the answer? Yeah, it's C, gift of the gap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> right, you, t- you know this really well. All right. Score check. Uh, so, uh, yes? Gets three. Yeah. Swoop two. Yeah. Drew three. Yeah. All right, we've got a tie. Uh, you can level it here. The other two boys. Swoop, you can level it. Uh, Gits and Biv are on three apiece. This is a big one. Mac, you famously tattooed... Uh, Island coach Andy Farrell on your leg due to a bet that you lost. What was the threat that Andy made towards you if you pulled out from getting the piece of ink? Was it A, you have to get a tat of Owen Farrell on the other leg? (laughs) Was it B, you will not be allowed back into Island camp? Was it C, you have to tackle Bundy one-on-one 50 times? (laughs) Or D, you have to go back and play for the Brumbies? (laughs) You really have a problem with the Brumbies, Tommy. I love the Brums. (laughs) Gun Garland, you have to come back for Gun Garland. I think it's going to be Owen, maybe. Got to get a tattoo of Owen. Owen. I'm going to say, can't come back into Island Camp. Island B. Camp. Bundy. Bundy. Ding. Oh, sorry, Mac. Answer? B, couldn't go back into camp. Yes. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, out in front. From behind. Boring. Congratulations to Biv. Here's oh, did I win? You did, yeah. From behind. From behind. <laughs> well done, bro. <laughs> Very good. Uh, <laughs> congratulations. Uh, you win. Um, does he win anything? Cottage. Cottage cheese. Congratulations. Hey, um, Mac, can we just quickly talk to you about your tattoos off the back of that one? Because you've got some pretty amazing ones. You got a tattoo of your dog? I do. got a tattoo of my dog. Um, I got a tattoo of my housemate. Um, I've got my mate's dad's name on my, on my leg as well, Jerry Dooley. <laughs> Um, there's not too much thought behind them, really. It's just, just how I'm feeling. But you, you got a, you got a lot of people's names or faces on your body. Have you got your missus tattooed on you? I, I don't. I don't have missus anymore. Uh, oh, Mitch. Fuck. Thanks. Thanks for bringing oh, that. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> now I feel really bad. Well, so you're lucky you didn't get a tattoo of her. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll cut that out. <laughs> uh, we'll leave that in. Mac, I've got the perfect woman for you. Her name's Darcy. <laughs> and she Listening. loves scrummaging. Um, all good. We've got to leave that in. That's, that's life. Mate, it's- it just got a lot hotter in here. I feel really bad. Sorry, mate. That's good. <laughs> hey, Mac, thanks so much for joining us. Um, mate, um, good, luck with the, uh, good luck with the injury. Good luck with the comeback. Uh, and I guess good, you're going down. The island's playing South Africa. Aren't they? You're going down there? Yeah, no, the, I'll hopefully we'll be back for that. So that's our summer tour is um, yeah, in South Africa. Just two games over there. So, yeah, no, i just got to get back playing footy and then hopefully get called up. Perfect. All right. Hey, thanks, Mac, so much for joining us. We'll chat to you soon. And we look forward to seeing that Coco tattoo where? <laughs> on your face? Anyway, anyway, we'll take uh, it anywhere. I think neck. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, mate. Thanks. Appreciate you getting up so early as well. Uh, thanks, Mike. Thanks, lads. Cheers, Very Mac. Fun. Thanks, Mac. Well, that was Mac Hansen. Um, obviously, a uh, big fan of the show until Drew insulted him. Oh, jeez. Um, where socials? Where can you find us? <laughs> um, at kickoffs and kickons is everywhere. X, Insta, YouTube, TikTok. Make sure you get on. Like, follow. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Anybody that watched the old show that's like, I wish those blokes had started again, let them know that we have started again. If you're a sponsor and you don't like money and you just want to give it to a Back, a pack of battlers, uh, please. Uh, Insta DM us. Oh, yes. Insta DM us. Uh, hey, gents, thank you so much. Oh, it's been fun. Absolutely great. It's been guess. hot. It Hopefully has been very hot. You spit the marbles out before next week? Oh, mate, I had a shocker today, but I think it's because it's 45 It degrees. is a lot. Very hot. Hey, Gitz, good luck with all that training. Mate, I got my first game. Oh. oh. In about two years. This weekend. Ew. How did we not go into that? Who are you playing against? Oh, it doesn't matter. It's not about me. We're playing <laughs> Chicago. 
Okay. Oh, Chicago. Uh, Aussie, uh, oh. Giddy up against Billy Meeks in the 12 channel. Yeah. Or are you playing 10? No, I, I think Billy is playing 10. Ooh. Wow. And how can yeah. people watch the Legion, Giddy? Can they log on to somewhere if they're out of the country? I'll, I'll have my Instagram live on when I'm playing. I'll put it in my front pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Make sure you log on to what's your handle? At, at it doesn't matter. I'll change it to kick off. <laughs> 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 Thank you, mate. All right. Uh, make sure you watch The Legion. Go The Legion. Uh, that was the show, Kickoffs and Kick-Ons, Episode 2. Um, we'll see you next week. I think we've got Big Jim Hamilton on next week. Is that right, Gits? Yeah, we do. Aye. Aye. Aye, Aye laddie. <laughs> Very good. All right. Hey, sign us off, Biv. Go, go. G'day, please. If you like the show, well, show us you liked it by pressing like and subscribe so we can exist because we don't have any more money. We need your support and make sure you check out our other videos.